Hello, welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I'm your host. My guest is Donna Daskow, who is one of Canada's leading pollsters and public opinion analysts. And she's also the national chair of the organization Equal Voice. She's here to talk about electing a more women in the arena of politics, so I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Donna's. So Donna Dasko, it's so nice to have you here nice today. Nice to be here. Now, um, of course, you're, you are a pollster, yeah. you're a public opinion analyst, and if there is anyone in Canada who has their finger on the pulse of how Canadians think or what we're thinking, it would be you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, yes, if Does that such, sum it up? If such a thing is possible, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and, uh, but I also know, of course, you are the founder and uh, the national chair of Equal Voice. Now, Equal right. Voice is an organization dedicated to electing more women in Canada. She, um, and uh, you've been uh, a pollster for about, what, how many years now? For, for my whole career. I've been, right. I've been in the polling business, in the public opinion research business. Lots of fun really interesting to study Canadians and politics and what they think about issues and, and, and how to move forward various uh, issues on the public policy agenda. Now your right. passion is, is uh, women in politics. Yes. And this is what we're here to talk about today. Yes, we are. Uh, our goal, my goal, is to elect more women to all levels of government in Canada, uh, municipal, federal and provincial. Uh, Equal Voice wants to see more women there, and uh, we we formed ten years ago. And I just say I was one of the founders of it, so I don't I don't claim to be the only founder. Of course, as as many of these things work, uh, a, a bunch of women got together and said, "What can we do to elect more women?" We looked at the country and. We, we didn't think there were enough women in elected office, and this is exactly 10 years ago. Uh, we looked around, we, we saw that there were only 20% of, uh, of parliament was female. We hadn't made a lot of progress, and we said to ourselves, we've got to do something because there's something wrong with the country that doesn't have more women um, in those decision-making positions. So we formed an organization, and here we are 10 years later, <laughs> still working at it. Well, congratulations. <clears throat> Thank you. When you were, um, before we talk more about the organization, uh, as you were growing up, was there, did you have a role model or was there a woman in politics that you looked up to or uh, even if it wasn't in politics, if it was <coughs> just a, a political or a, a public figure of some sort? You know, Shannon, there were no women in politics when I was growing up. I can't remember seeing any women. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, so I can't say that there were any role models in that sense. I was interested in politics uh, throughout my young years. My father was, uh, was uh, always interested in the political scene and he was, would comment on politics. And so I kind of developed an interest in politics from my father, who's a great guy. And uh, my parents um, were, were keen for me to, you know, to do well in school and get a good education. And that's, I would say that they were, an inspiration for me, but I didn't see any women. And um, and as I went into university, I, I started to, to wonder why this was and think about that a little bit more. And then uh, when I started to see, uh, from time to time, women in, in politics, I was very interested in what they had to say and how well they did. And so the my interest in uh, seeing more women kind of evolved. It was kind of an evolutionary process. Uh, to the point where I joined an or another organization in the in the late 1980s, a group called the Committee for 94, which is a bit of the predecessor uh, to Equal Voice. I was invited to join that organization, and uh, that organization decided to fold uh, when uh, when we didn't reach our goal, which was to elect half the House women uh, by 1984. So that, that didn't that didn't happen. So we, we kind of broke up. Um, Sorry, committee for 94. It was half the house by 94, so we, we broke up at that point. Like a relationship and that's not going anywhere, so you just break up. Yeah, we <laughs> just you know we just kind of said, okay, well, let's just give it up for a while. But then a group of us kind of got together in uh, in the year um, in, in ten years ago, and we said, well, you know, this this is still important, and we haven't made any progress, and so that's how we formed Equal Voice. So, Donna, <clears throat> what inspires you to and what sort of is that spark that keeps you going? Well, um, 
<clears throat> when I look at electing more women, I, I see so many reasons why we have to have more women in politics. And I think the, the main reason is just simply the state of Canadian democracy. There's something wrong <clears throat> if, we, if we don't represent our population in our right. parliaments and our legislatures. So there is something wrong when we, we are half the population and we're just not there in, in any numbers that, that even remotely represent uh, what we are in, in, terms of, in terms of Canadian society. So, so it's just that gap. There's a huge democratic deficit, I think, and, and that's we don't have enough women there. Um, so our voices aren't there. That means the views that women have about issues are not adequately represented. Um, um, and um, that those are you know the, the kinds of reasons that I, I think we need to have more women there. The culture of politics isn't very open to women. I think if we had more women there, we would change the culture of politics. I think it would be better uh, for the country. And I think if we had more women there, our daughters and our nieces and our young women would have more role models. So we'd have, so there's so many reasons why we need to have more women. Well, let's talk <coughs> about uh, equal voice for a moment. Um, you know, it's been around for 10 years. Um, obviously, a much needed organization. Um, let's just talk about sort of what's, what, it, what it does do. Well, one of the main things we do is to advocate for change. Right. So we are multipartisan, and that's very important. We have chapters across the country. So we try to impress the political parties to nominate more women. So we think if women are nominated, they're going to be elected. So that's the first, that's a big step. Right. So if we can give, convince the parties to do more, and so we, we try to put pressure on them uh, at the federal level in particular, and also in the, at the provincial level to the extent that we have chapters across the country. So, so that's, that's our, one of our main activities. We also press for change when we, um, uh, to change in our, uh, for example, our electoral system, uh, we try to move toward a different system that's more amenable to electing more women. So that advocacy is really important. So we also try to raise awareness of the lack of women in politics. So whenever uh, you know you see newspaper articles about women or might, might be uh, talking about how a woman looks or something like that, we always try to intervene and try to try to get the message out that. We, we have to. We can't treat women like this in the public sphere. Right, yeah. We try to raise awareness of, of the lack of women, and that's raising awareness among the public and among the political players and among the media. So we, we, we do that. So that's an important thing, uh, and we also encourage women to run. So we we do whatever we can to assist women and encourage women. Um, that means, for example, we have an online campaign school. Uh, on our on our website, or women can go and learn about the tips of running, important things to, to run, the important things that they may need that they on, need to know. That's <laughs> on the Equal Voice uh, website, yes. which is at uh, <coughs> equalvoice.ca. Yes, okay, right. right. So yeah. our 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 campaign school is there too. So that's one of the ways okay. that we assist women to run. We also try to encourage young women to step forward. And one of the great things we did over this past year was we have a program called Experiences, which is, uh, which is targeted at younger women. Um, and we, one of the programs we had was a campaign school for high school girls. So we would go into high schools and we would talk to girls in grade 11 or 10 and, and tell them how to run for student council. It's just that simple. Just, you know, um, just told them it was important to do so and told them how they could do it how they could run a campaign, put a campaign together and run for student council. So that's planting the seed. So that's getting women at a very young age to take that step. And if they get the bug, you know, if they're interested in politics and they, they like that experience, well then, you know, it's just natural for them to, to think about that as a career. So Donna, well, <coughs> after, we're going to take a quick break and it's, it's my good to know a minute. I know you've got a great <coughs> tip. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to pick it up and we'll talk more about women in politics in Canada. But in the meantime, I know you've got a great success tip. Well, I would say the success tip when it comes to women, when it comes to politics, is I want women to take that step. 
I want them to engage. I want them to step forward into the political arena. I want them to uh, not stand back and, and not question their own, uh, their own abilities and their own experience and their own uh, preparedness. This is, this is something really interesting. When, uh, when um, a woman is approached to run for office, she'll say, well, me, you know, I, I don't know enough. Whereas a man is approached for politics, he will, he will say, well, what took you so long to ask, right? So you, you get a, a whole different orientation. So um, I want women to, to be confident to take that leap into politics. Well, that's good to know. <clears throat> Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Donna Dasko, National Chair of Equal Voice. So stay right there. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I am joined by Donna Daskow, who is one of Canada's leading pollsters, uh, public opinion analyst, and of course she is also the national chair of Equal Voice. And we are here talking about electing women, uh, more women, uh, in politics in Canada. Donna, why do we not have more women in politics in this country? Well, there's not one reason. But let me tell you about a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, um, we know that women uh, tend, to tend to take on more family responsibilities. Uh, and they also have other career choices. So that's one factor that I think keeps some women from thinking about politics. But sometimes we overemphasize uh, that as a factor. But that, that's still, it, it, is, it is still there. So that's one reason. Another reason is uh, the political environment we have right now with Parliament and the bickering and the kind of, it's a kind of unfriendly atmosphere and that atmosphere in politics does not appeal to a lot of women. So they, you know, they don't like the way politics kind of works um, and, and so that's a bit of a turn off. So that's the second reason why. But I think the, really the main reason is that our political parties have, uh, and our institutions have not done enough to actually get more women involved. So they don't nominate women in, in large enough numbers. Uh, there is an old boys network that still exists. It's, it's very strong in many parties and many, and many political settings. Um, our electoral system is not really conducive to electing women, let's say compared to some of the electoral systems in Europe, which are much more conducive to electing women. So we have all those kind of systemic barriers as well that, that come at the level of politics and the level of the political system. So we have a lot of different factors that are, are at work. Right now, Canada, if you can believe this, is 40th in the world in terms of the number of women we, are, we have elected. 40th in the world. <clears throat> yes, 40, so, the 40th. So just think about yeah. how great Canada is in other respects. You know, we have one of the best standards of living in the world best quality of life, great healthcare system, right. all those great things that Canada has, and yet we're 40th in the world when it comes to electing women. So, you know, it's an embarrassment, like there's something wrong here, right? So, uh, so those, are, those are some of the reasons why, um, <clears throat> why we, don't, we don't have more women. Well, how <clears throat> early um, is it for, to encourage girls and young women to get involved? I mean, how <clears throat> young is too young to encourage um, you know, our youth to get interested in a, in a career in politics? I think we have to start at a young age. Um, do we not start young enough, do you think, yet? At this well, I, I, I think this is what happens, and, and there's some American research that, that, that has shown this. When it comes to boys, uh, family members or parents or relatives will say, uh, you know, let's say if the boy's particularly precocious or talks or is active or is kind of outgoing, they'll say, you know, Johnny, you know, you should, you're going to be prime minister someday, you know, you're going to be president someday, you're going to run for office. But they don't say that to the girls, right? I mean, just those little comments about, um, about the possibility that they, they could aspire to this kind of uh, career. So we don't say that to girls uh, uh, very much at all. So it's something I think we have to think about when we see girls who are interested and you know uh, do seem to be sort of uh, public-minded or public-spirited. We don't actually say those things to girls 
but we, we have to. So we have to think about that when uh, when girls are at, at you know at a young age and they show this kind of interest. We have to say these kinds kinds of things to them, and those that that's what gives girls ideas and dreams about this as a career. So that's one way that we can do that, and we should be doing that from an earlier age. And some of the research that's been done shows that, in fact, uh, girls and women are not approached in those ways. Are, uh, people don't make those kinds of comments. And that kind of continues into their adult life, where women are much less likely to say they've been approached by political parties or by friends or, or colleagues saying to them, you know, you should go into politics. So they need that kind of encouragement more. Donna, <clears throat> what? Uh, why is it that women actually do or could make a really great political candidate? Well, of course, women um, women tend to prepare. As I was saying earlier, they, they do they do tend to be prepared, but they sometimes don't think they're prepared. But in fact, uh, many women are 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 prepared. Shannon, if you go across this country today, you go into any community any community, you will find women active in organizations, in leadership, in any community in this country. They will be active in, um, um, in uh, the home and school associations, in community organizations, in labor unions, in uh, you know, Kiwanis clubs, Lions clubs, uh, boards of trade, all of that. So, so you'll see women in these leadership positions uh, across the country. And this is where uh, political parties find candidates. So they're out there already, and this is what makes great candidates, people who are active in their communities, who are motivated and moved by issues, the women are already there. So therefore, they are, they are already there to be the great candidates. They're already prepared in so many ways to step forward into that political arena. Uh, and women, I mean, women are great campaigners, uh, and um, um, just just... At any level you look at, women women are great candidates, and of course they represent the views of women too. So there's every reason for them to, to be in politics in greater numbers. Oh, this has been a really <coughs> enlightening uh, conversation. Um, I have uh, one last question for you. Uh, can you give me an example of um, you know a young woman or a woman uh, <coughs> of any age uh, that you've uh, encouraged through Equal Voice to? step into that political career? You know, Shannon, I'd be hesitate to, I hesitate to mention any names. Uh, I hope we've inspired some young women through our programs, our campaign schools. I hope we've inspired some of them to, go, to step forward. Uh, one thing we've tried to do at Equal Voice is to celebrate women who, who are in politics and to encourage their careers. So I hope we've helped them to um, feel that we're, we're there for them. Um, and we've encouraged women to run, I think, through our, um, our campaign schools and to our speaking out across the country. So I know they're out there, and I, and I, I, think, we've, I think we've had an impact. And also, I'll tell you another way we've had an impact. In this past federal election, the number of women who are elected went up from 22% to 25% of Parliament. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an increase. And Slow, slowly yes, but surely. We, we did make an increase. We do have the highest number elected now, although it's nowhere near enough. And I think we can take some credit, hopefully, <laughs> for that increase. Because I think we try very hard to encourage women to run and to raise awareness of, of this among the political parties. So. Well, Donna, I thoroughly have enjoyed having you here on the show uh, and sharing your, your um, story and about your organization. Uh, if there is someone out there who wants to contact you and find out more information, uh, they could go to your website at equalvoice.ca. Yes, that's the place to go, okay. for sure. And join us and uh, help change the face of Canadian politics. Well, thanks sure. for being here today and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I've been speaking with Donna Dasko, who is uh, the National Chair of Equal Voice. So if you have an interest in uh, getting involved in politics, check out their website at equalvoice.ca, and there's lots of information there for you. So I, I encourage you to do that. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Lots of places to find me. 
Special thanks to my family and friends for your ongoing support. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. See you soon.